Drew Locke, out. Brett Rippon, out. Jeff Driscoll, out. Blake Bortles, out. Drew Brees, out. Game on! The Denver Broncos were forced to activate a wide receiver from their practice squad to start at quarterback. Yes, a wide receiver playing quarterback after Drew Locke, Brett Rippon, and Jeff Driscoll, and Blake Bortles all fell victim to COVID protocols. Despite negative tests from Locke, Rippon, and Bortles, the NFL refused to reschedule this game, even though all three of the Broncos quarterbacks could have been available in 48 hours with continued negative test results. But since the NFL does not care about anything other than money, Denver was forced to start practice squad wide receiver Kendall Hinton, who last played some quarterback in college at Wake Forest, with his last touchdown pass coming in 2017. Denver re-signed Hinton to the practice squad on November 4th after releasing him in September before the season started. He was working a sales job in the meantime. Heading into this game, this was the extent of his passing experience in an NFL uniform, courtesy Ryan Green. What I will present to you today is a form of NFL football we never want to see again. A game where Taysom Hill is your most experienced passer. That's not that good sports. Please, if you're super into NFL football, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, I launched a coffee company last week called Benchwarmer Brew. Benchwarmerbrew.com, check it out. I'm very proud of this, as I found the finest beans to liqui liquefy for your mouth. See, I can fuck up my own promo and just keep rolling with it. Craft roasted, organic, ethically sourced, simply delicious coffee. And every order you place helps someone who needs a meal. I've partnered my coffee company with the Faya Foundation so we can give back. And every week on my NFL Best and Worst episode, we will reward the bench player, the best bench player of the week. The first winner was actually Taysom Hill. And even though he did not play well, I'm giving the bench warmer bench player nod to Kendall Hilton for having the big, bold beans any man would need to play quarterback in the NFL with absolutely no warning or prepper, prepper, pre preparation. Benchwarmerbrew.com As soon as I saw Nate Robinson get knocked out, I knew it would be a metaphor for this game and a meme, a meme I would create. The Broncos were Nate Robinson without the cockiness heading into this game. And Roger Goodell is Jake Paul, not giving them 48 hours to get a real QB behind the center. I honestly don't even know who is worse anymore, Jake Paul or Roger Goodell. Broncos versus Saints on November 29th, 2020 was just a classic contagious disease practice squad QB elevation game. We've seen it a thousand times before. It's how Kurt Warner started his career. It's how Tom Brady got the gig. And it's how practice squad wide receiver Kendall Hinton solidified himself as the Broncos franchise quarterback after throwing for, oh no, 13 yards, two picks, and completing one pass. Damn, I was really hoping for a miracle here. Expecting a miracle in the year 2020, though, is like expecting my dog to breed thoroughbred puppies after I've had him neutered. And neutered is what the Broncos offense was in this game. The Broncos, though, were so desperate for a quarterback, they asked if quality control coach Rob Calabrese could be allowed to play QB. The NFL denied their request because they respect rules and player safety. On to the game. The reason you're here. The first two plays, it was running back Philip Lindsay who kept the ball on the option. Asking a running back to run the option is like asking an alcoholic to keep your finest wine and whiskey safe by not drinking it. A running back is going to keep the ball about 100% of the time on the option. That plan of attack was working though. I liked that the game started with the Wildcat. 
Which is exactly why offensive coordinator and football genius Pat Shermer threw in his wide receiver slash quarterback on third and three and then asked him to throw for the first time ever on that play. Which of course ended in an incompletion. The good news is that when your opponent is also starting a quarterback, tight end, wide receiver slash special teamer, you can stay in the game with good defense and sacks. Taysom Hill holds onto the ball longer than he held on to his virginity here, and the Denver D kept the game tied at zero. On the Broncos' second series, they tried some trickery, had Philip Lindsay hand off to Melvin Gordon, and then brought in Kendall Hinton on third down again to nearly throw an interception. Not that it's fair to really critique anything Denver did in this game with conviction, but uh, I would have had Hinton play a full series, do the handoffs, let him maybe get some comfort, and then ask him to make some throws. Uh, Bradley Chubb stopped the Saints on the next series with another third down sack for the Denver D. After two series by each offense, the Saints had negative 13 passing yards, while Denver boasted zero in this old-fashioned slugfest. The Denver defense uh, actually gave the Saints their first first down of the game by jumping off sides. Hinton and Hill combined for the fewest of any passing stats through the first quarter of any game this season. And even as the Saints entered the red zone, Hill still had negative eight passing yards. Alvin Kamara and Latavius Murray fought their way on the ground, as did Taysom Hill, who impressively kept those negative eight passing yards as he took the lead with a rushing touchdown. Broncos fans will never forget that time Tim Tebow beat the Chiefs by completing just two passes on eight attempts. But Mitch Trubisky completed four of seven passes in a winning effort over the Panthers in 2017, giving him the award of fewest passing attempts in a victory. And after watching three Kendall Hinton passes, uh, four completions seemed like a lofty goal. He looked like he hadn't been throwing at all at practice. Almost like he was playing a position other than quarterback and given no time to prepare to play a game as QB. That's what it looked like. By the fifth Broncos offensive series, I realized it's just time to fire Pat Shermer. I said we shouldn't judge him on this game, but I am. It was clear Hinton felt more comfortable getting out of the pocket to make his throws. And instead of playing to that strength, with the Broncos' strength, running the ball, and then setting up some play action, easy throws, Shermer was like, nah, you throw deep in my offense, kid. I've never seen an OC do his QB fewer favors than one Pat Shermer. Now a bad snap and a fumble by running back slash quarterback play caller Philip Lindsay resulted in another Taysom Hill rushing touchdown. I will say Garrett Bowles is earning every penny of his new four year extension, saving the touchdown with the shoelace tackle. The silver lining is that Philip Lindsay still has never fumbled as center Lloyd Cushenberry got dinged for the bad snap. The bad news, uh, Taysom Hill had more rushing touchdowns at this point than the Broncos had passing yards. Kendall Hinton was able to throw his first, shit, interception, interception before halftime. Again, because his offensive coordinator was dialing up throws, he has no business attempting. But all that was going wrong on offense, the Broncos were down just 17 to zero at half. And the Broncos matched themselves. They went an entire half without completing a pass. The last team to do that, those 2011 Denver Broncos with Tim Tebow. And that record will never be broken by any other team. Eat shit, all of the worst teams to ever play the game. The Broncos will lord this over you forever. Basically, close to three quarters of competitive football is all you can hope for when one team literally does not have a quarterback. Now it wasn't until the third quarter that Kendall Hinton got his first NFL completion. And guess what it was? An easy pass to tight end Noah Fant, who also got the Broncos their second first down of the game in the third quarter. Sure, that was followed by an interception two plays later, but hell yes, Hinton! That is a man who was asked to do the impossible. And you know what? 
He fucking tried. Taysom Hill threw his first pick of the season, and I think that was Isang Basie's first career pick. If you slap at a base, you're gonna get played, Taysom. Enter Brandon McManus, known Gooch Slayer, to save the Broncos from being shut out by nailing his career-long 58-yard field goal right down the Gooch. The Broncos, without a quarterback, scored more points than those stupid Jets did against the Dolphins this season with Joe Flacco who started at QB for the Broncos last year. So, in an absolute worst case scenario, the Broncos are still better than the Jets. The Broncos avoided a shutout, and a few plays later, Latavius Murray broke free for a long touchdown run. That is when I believe Sean Payton and Vic Fangio should have mutually agreed to kneel for the rest of the game like gentlemen. Keep your guys healthy and stick it to the NFL. It's a win-win. Instead, the Saints went on to win this one, 31-3, behind four rushing touchdowns and over 200 ground yards. Even a low-key, good defense like the Broncos cannot survive with zero offensive production. Gap assignment. Gap integrity. Wait, what was that? Gap integrity. When I hear gap integrity, all I can think of is Michael Strahan. The man with the most integrity. But let's not get distracted. This was the dumbest NFL game I've ever watched. The only thing it was missing was commentary from Booger McFarland. And I was actually excited to see how this shit show would play out. I was curious. But that's the kind of curiosity that kills all the fucking cats. It was not a good product and the NFL should be ashamed for letting it happen. If that was someone's first NFL experience, they will never watch football again. Look, I didn't expect the Broncos to win. I knew this would be a disaster, but it was worse. It was worse. And some stats to help point that out. Sean Payton got his first win against the Broncos. First win ever. And all he had to do was play against them without quarterbacks. Taysom Hill and Kendall Hinton combined for 10 completions, 91 passing yards, three interceptions, and zero touchdown passes. That's combined. One question. Uh, what the hell is your excuse, Taysom? The Broncos finished the game with more interceptions than completions. The first time a team has done that since the Ryan Leaf-led Chargers in 1998. They're also the first team to complete just one pass in a game since the 49ers in 2005. And just like my first time, it's all bad. Like that bad sex, this game was over quickly. That was the only good thing that happened outside of the Saints extending their lead over the Bucks. To protect this team, maybe John Elway should have actually forfeited the game. But damn it, damn it, I have never had more respect for the Broncos than I do today. Okay, maybe after Super Bowl 50. And maybe Peyton Manning's record-setting offensive season and Super Bowl 32 and Super Bowl 33 and Jake Plummer beating the Patriots in the playoffs. But after those five things, this game, I respect the hell out of the effort of a team the NFL took a giant dump on to prove a frivolous point. Don't take your mask down in a socially distanced area even when you're passing daily COVID tests. The defense, the Denver defense played their ass off. The offense tried. Kendall Hinton played quarterback in the NFL with zero reps at the position. I can't imagine many more professionally terrifying things than that. If I ever go under the knife, God forbid, I can only hope I get a real heart surgeon and not the intern who is doing podiatry rounds all month. And then he's, he's asked to clear my blocked arteries because the hospital, oh, they didn't like the way the heart surgeons did the one bad thing. And now I am screwed. Just like we all got screwed having to watch that game. The NFL, shame on you. Shame on you. And I saw Tom Brady at midfield without a mask after the Bucks Chiefs game, so he better never be allowed to play quarterback again. Java Java Ding Dong, we got coffee, baby. Oh, uh, thanks for watching. That's good sports. We've got the top five greatest redheads to ever play the game. It's a good episode. It tanked, but it's a good episode, and maybe you should check it out. It's on the screen right now.